Hi, everybody, and welcome to this class. We're happy to have you. It's the next edition in uh, Teacher Wesley's classes for the day. Uh, today's class is going to be uh, quite a good one, actually. What we're going to do is we're going to listen to an audio clip about six minutes long. And you're going to be able to follow along on the transcript, so you're going to practice your listening comprehension. Then we're going to talk about the article together. We're going to ask some different questions to see how much information you actually retain. Like I said, it's going to train your ear, it's going to train your eye, and it's going to help you with your pronunciation, your vocabulary, and your comprehension. So, good stuff. We've got it all planned and ready for you. Now, for those of you that don't know, uh, we have this thing called Verblink Premium, and what that does is that allows you to come right on in and guarantee yourself a seat right here up front. We're allowed nine seats with the Google Hangouts. And if we get uh, the, the first nine, basically guarantee that they can practice their English and talk with a native English speaker. So if you have uh, Verbling Premium, feel free to come on in now and take a seat. And uh, just in, as soon as we filled up the class, we'll get things underway. Okay, my name is Teacher Wesley, if you don't already know that. I have a feeling that some of you already do know that. And... Um, I'm going to give you the link to my Facebook page there. So I like to share that with my students because I, I would like you guys to be able to give feedback to me based on, uh, on the classes. So after a class, you can always go there and tell me what you thought. Let me know how we can improve, things like that. Okay, guys? So as I mentioned, once uh, we get you guys seated here, then we'll, we'll get things underway. The time here where I'm at, as you can tell, it's the afternoon. It's 2 o'clock. And uh, so I've had a good day so far. When you guys come in, I'll be interested to hear how your day has been so far, wherever you're at, whatever time it is, and uh, if you went to work today or what you did, and uh, see how you guys are doing. Whatever the case is, I'm happy that you've taken time out of your day to come on, come on into the Verbling uh, website and be able to practice your English. So we'll just wait here a couple of moments, and you guys should be coming in at any time here. Yes, in fact, here's our first. Dimitri, how you doing, man? Uh, hello, I'm sorry, but... Uh, uh, how you doing? Dimitri, are you there? Okay, no problem. We'll come back to you, Dimitri. Um, Romulo, how are you? Romulo, are you there? Okay, maybe not quite yet. All right, no problem. Let's go to Paolo. Hi, Paolo, how you doing? I'm fine, you? Good, thank you, good, thank you. Um, where are you from? What are you doing today? Today, so far, I'm nothing. I'm from Brazil and I'm unemployed now, so I'm looking for a job. That's why I'm doing. You're you're looking. You've been looking for a job. Yes. Oh, okay. What kind of job would you like? I'm a major green business administration, administration, so I'm looking for a, a job in, as an administrator. Okay, you're looking for a job as an as an administrator. Yes. Okay, good stuff. So thank you for coming to the class. We're happy to have you, and uh, yeah, we're having a little bit of trouble here, guys. I know there's some people that have got their mics on. Everybody, when you enter the class, you have to mute your microphone, okay? Because what happens is I can hear you typing, I can hear you speaking. If you've got people talking in the background, we can hear it. And it makes it really hard for the rest of the students, okay? So if you've got your microphone on, please mute it. All right, Laura, how are you? 
Hello again. I'm very well, thank you, and you? Good, thank you. I'm glad that you've come back to the next class. We kind of missed you last class. Just, yes, I had uh, technical problems and just left class from that. Ah, I see. Okay, no problem, no problem. Well, I'm glad that you made it into this class. So, um, we'll look forward to being able to chat with you a little bit more throughout the class, okay? Okay. Okay, good stuff. Juan, hi, hi Juan, how are you this afternoon? Or today, I should say. Hi, teacher. I could complain, but I won't. <laughs> You could complain, but you won't. Why? It, uh, ah, just, just kidding, teacher. Everything is being peaches and cream. Okay, good stuff. Where are you from? From Mexicali, Baja California, Mexico. Okay, good, good. And what time is it where you're at? 11 a.m. Oh, really? Okay, so you're yeah. in the Pacific time zone. That's right. Okay, good. And uh, what do you do for work? Well, I fix computers, and I'm also a doctor assist assistant as well. Oh, okay, okay, good. I love your picture. That's hilarious. <laughs> no <laughs> burrito. <laughs> Thanks. What what state are you in, teacher? What's that? What state are you in? Well, I'm uh, I'm actually not in any state in the United States. I okay. am currently... Yeah, I'm currently abroad. I'm on an island in the Caribbean. Oh, which one? Oh, which one? The Dominican Republic. Dominican Republic. Okay, it's called okay. La Española, right? Uh -huh. It's attached to Haiti. Yeah, exactly. Uh, I, I know yeah. where you are. Did you? Okay, good. Have Have you been here before? Mm, no, but I love geography, so. I'm pretty much aware. Even though, if you remember, there was an earthquake a few years ago in Haiti. Yes, of course. So that's was, the reason why it became like important, right? That's right. Yeah, I was here when that happened, actually. Really? Yeah, yeah, I was oh. here. Mm -hmm. But anything happened to you, right? Nothing because happened to me personally, but uh, a lot happened to to my friends and whatnot. So I was fortunate, but some of my friends were were impacted by the disaster. Um, but anyways, um, that's right. In the country over there is still in a lot of turmoil, as you, as as some of you probably are aware of. The <clears throat> Port-au-Prince is still in shambles from the disaster there. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So not good, not good. But uh, anyways, welcome to the class, and I'm happy to have you here. We're just going to finish greeting the rest of the students, and then we'll get things underway. Okay. So hi, Hector. How you doing? Hi, how are you? Good, Hector. Good, good. What's going on? Where are you from? Okay, I, 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 I was born in Venezuela, but I lived in Spain 12 years, and I am living in Amsterdam right now. In where? In Amsterdam, Netherlands. Oh, you're living in Amsterdam. Okay, great. Fantastic. <laughs> yeah, why are you learning English? Mm, because I, I because I needed to to find a job here. It's difficult without English. Okay, so you would like to find work. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. I, 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 I'm looking for a job. Okay. Well I hope that I can help you with that, okay? <laughs> Thank you. That'll be my goal. Okay, good. Um down the line. Hayat, good, she's back for more, that's fantastic. Happy to have you, Hayat. Dimitri, how are you? Uh, hello, teacher. I'm pretty good, thank you. How are you? Good, I'm well. Thank you very much. Just going to have some water here. Where You're from where? I, I forget. I'm from Central Europe, Ukraine. Okay, you've been in my class before, right? Uh, yes, I think I have been in your class for two times. I think, yeah, I remember your picture, so <laughs> welcome back. What time is it over there? Uh, it is uh, 8 11. 8 11. Yes. What did you have for dinner? Uh, I cannot have dinner, but um, I have uh, had a lunch. <laughs> What's that? Sorry? Mm, I have not had a dinner right now. You can't have dinner? No, I will have dinner after our class. Oh, you're going to have dinner after? What are you going to have for dinner? Mm, I will get a 
Car uh, porridge. Sorry, porridge. Uh, you're going to have porridge for dinner? Yes. Oh, okay. Do you like porridge? Uh, yes, I like it because really? it's really very useful food for me. Yeah. Now, do you? A lot of people in my country eat porridge for breakfast, but you're going to have it for dinner. Mm, most of all, I like uh, macaroni. I like porridge. Uh, it is almost uh, all my food. <laughs> are you a bachelor? Ah, uh, sorry. I, I, are you a bachelor? Are you married? Ah, uh, no, no. I am only eighteen years old, and I just like sports and need to have a lot of calories. Oh, okay, okay. Well, that's why. I eat. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no problem. That's great. Okay. Well, anyways, whatever you like, that's fine. But uh, I like to ask because you know it gets you to to have to use some different vocabulary about the types of foods that you like. So great stuff. Okay, welcome to the class. And hi, Ken. How are you, Ken Akpe? Uh, Ken. Hi, um, my name is John. Oh, it's <laughs> Turkish. Not. The pronouns, uh, John. John. Uh, yes. It's not okay. No problem, John. Um, okay. How are you today? I I am fine. And you? I'm doing well. Thanks for asking. Yeah. Uh, where are you from? I am from Turkey. You're from Turkey. Okay. How many languages do you speak? Uh, two language. Turkish. And the Kurdish. And Kurdish? Yes. Wow, fantastic. And some English? Yes. So like two and a Ma half? Maybe. <laughs> yeah, no, that's good. Well done. That's one more language than me. <laughs> okay, great. Well, we're happy to have you. And uh, Andrea, Lucia, Catini, how are you? Fine, you. Good, I'm good. Thank you. What's 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 going on today? Where are you at? What? Maybe I could get you. You see, I can hear my voice coming through your computer. Could, can you shut off all of the boxes? Can you shut off if you have any other verbling web pages? Can you shut them off? Yeah. Okay. Where are you from, Andrea? I'm from you. Where? I'm from Brazil. From Brazil. Okay, welcome. Thank you. How long have you been learning English? Uh, almost four years. Almost five years? Four years. Four, four years. Yes. Okay. Yes. Good. Do you like it? Yes, I like. Why do you like it? Because it's very interesting to learn the other languages, and the yeah. English is very important. That's true, and English is also very hard to learn, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. English is not an easy language to learn, but we're going to help you guys today. We're going to help you with it. Okay, good. Welcome to the class. Now, um, Juan said something, and Juan is right. Andrea, what you need is you need a headset. You have to have earphones, okay? Uh, Yes. That's okay. that's why we're getting the noise. Yeah. Do you have some in the house? Yes, I have. Okay, can if you put them in, that would be great. Thank you. Th thanks for helping, Juan. I I didn't notice that. Sometimes I got a lot going on. You know, you got chat box and nine students, and so I didn't notice that. Thank you. Good job. I like it when the students help out. All right, let's go to Abdallah Sami. Hi, Abdallah. Hi, teacher. How are you? <laughs> Good, thank you. What's going on? Where are you at today? Are you working? Are you at home? Yeah, uh, uh, now I'm uh, in the home. Okay, did you have a good day today? Yes. <laughs> yeah? Tell me about your day. What did you do? I, uh, I, went, uh, I went to the faculty and I... Uh, I attended to uh, two practical sections and uh, I uh, I met my uh, friends uh, there in the faculty. Mm -hmm. 
that's all and <laughs> and I returned after this after that <laughs> <laughs> okay well that sounds good that sounds good welcome to the class okay happy to have you here in fact that's everybody we've introduced everybody so welcome everybody I'm so happy that you have made some time out of your busy schedules to come over to the class and uh, let me tell you that my name is teacher Wesley and I've been teaching English uh, as a second language for over five years but I have over 20 years teaching experience so I'm happy that I'm here with you guys able to share some of what I've uh, learned and pass it on to you and hopefully it will benefit you in whatever goals you have for learning a new uh, for, or for uh, getting a new job or for traveling or whatever it is I hope that I can help you today okay guys so today we're gonna be uh, we're gonna practice your listening comprehension we're gonna listen to a six minute uh, audio clip. I'm going to play the audio clip for you guys and while you're listening to it I want you each to follow along and here's the transcript. It's in the chat box there. That's the transcript and you're going to hear Rob and Jennifer speaking to each other. You're going to follow along uh, and then after we're going to ask some questions about the transcript or about the, the, the conversation and we're going to look at some of the new vocabulary and we're going to have a basic chat about it just to see how much you guys understood and then if we have time we'll do another one after that so we should be able to get hopefully two done today so 12 minutes of listening to audio and it should it should really test uh, or give you a good indication of how much information you retain when you listen to it okay so that's the idea now let me just uh, get my audio set up I'll just be one half second okay so, one moment here, guys. Okay, good. That wasn't so bad. Now, let me just get this set up and play it for you. One sec. This is 6 Minute English from bbclearningenglish.com. Hello, I'm Rob. Welcome to 6 Minute English. I'm joined today by Jennifer. Hi there, Rob. Thanks for joining me. Now, this year, the BBC is looking into the future in key areas of science, politics, education, and our personal life in a series called What If? One of the questions it's asking is, what if everyone had a car? And that's what we're discussing today, and we'll be looking at some of the language associated with driving and traffic. Well, living in London, I know all about traffic, especially traffic jams. That's where too many cars, lorries and buses get stuck in long queues on the road. Yes, they're stuck together, just like jam. And it's a big problem in cities around the world. It could be the situation that one day all the traffic becomes one long queue and we have a global traffic jam. Today, we'll be hearing about some possible solutions that may prevent this problem from happening. But first, I think it's only fair that we begin today's journey with a question. And this question is for me, I suppose. It is. On the subject of traffic jams, your question today is this. In 2010, one of the world's longest jams occurred in Beijing in China. Do you know how long it was? Was it A, 50 kilometers, B, 100 kilometers, or C, 200 kilometers? Wow, well, they're all very long, but I think I will go for A, 50 kilometers. 50 kilometers. Okay, well, let's find out if you're right at the end of the program. So we're dismissing the question, what if everyone had a car? It's quite a worrying thought because already there are a billion cars in the world. And it's estimated or predicted that by 2050 there will be four billion cars. That really would cause some serious gridlock. That means the roads in towns and cities are so blocked that traffic is unable to move. It's like that now in some developing countries where there's been a huge increase in car ownership. As people become wealthier, they want to own a car. But in one problem, 
as we can hear now from the BBC's Theo Leggett. What word does he use to describe the chaotic mix of different types of vehicles? This is Mumbai, the commercial capital of India, a fast-growing city and a potent symbol of India's recent economic success. But it has a problem, or to be more precise, it has 1.8 million problems. That's how many motor vehicles there are here, a maelstrom of cars, lorries, auto rickshaws and motorbikes, all crammed into roads which simply can't cope with this much traffic. That's the Olegit in Mumbai, a city which he describes as a potent symbol, a powerful symbol, of India's economic success. But that success has come at a price. In other words, there's a negative side to the story. Yes, the traffic, which he describes as a maelstrom, so a confusing, chaotic mix of vehicles which are crammed bumper to bumper, so squeezed closely together in the city streets. So, when the commuters start their journeys, or get behind the wheel in the morning rush hour, that's the busiest time of day, they could spend hours just trying to make a relatively short journey to work. Well, I think it would be quicker to walk. That's certainly a good option in London, where research has found that traffic is slower now than it was 100 years ago. So, is this the end of the road for cars? You mean, will we stop using them? I think not. And Bjorn Lomborg, director of Copenhagen Consensus Centre, agrees. Even with good public transport, that's bus and train services, he says we love our cars. What does he think the solution is? The solution is not, as many would like it to be, to cut back on cars because people want cars. The solution will have to be technological, to find smart ways of getting less polluting cars and cars that can pack much tighter and get much more efficiently around town. Right, so the solution is technological. Better technology to make cars less gas guzzling, so using less fuel, which causes less pollution, and they need to be smaller too. Yes, one company is already designing an MIT city car which actually folds. Another is designing a thinner car with two wheels, like a motorbike but more stable. And I've heard about self-driving robot cars that can save space on the road by driving closer to the car in front. All very clever ideas. But there's one thing you can't change, and that's the driver. And come on, Jen, who's the worst, men or women drivers? It's definitely men. Women drivers are very safe at all times, in my experience. Ah, I thought you'd say that. There's one thing you can't change, though, and that's your answer to today's question. Earlier I asked you, in 2010, one of the world's longest jams occurred in Beijing in China. Do you know how long it was? Was it A, 50 kilometres, B, 100 kilometres, or C, 200 kilometres? And I guessed A, 50 kilometres. And I'm afraid you were wrong, a bit oh. too short. This traffic jam was 100 kilometres long. It happened on the Beijing to Tibet expressway, and it lasted 12 days. OK, Jennifer, before we go, could you remind us of some of the words we learned today? Yes, we heard traffic jams, gridlock, a maelstrom, bumper to bumper, get behind the wheel, the infrastructure, the end of the road, gas guzzling, Thanks, Jennifer. Well, that's it for today. Please join us again soon for Six Minute English from BBC Learning English. Bye. Bye. That was Six Minute English. Hey, guys. Fantastic stuff. Can everybody still hear me okay? Yes. Yes. Perfect. Okay, good stuff. Yes. Now. Excellent, excellent. All right. So, how did you guys do? Do you guys feel you comprehended most of that? Uh, yes. Yeah? Yeah. Yes. Okay, yes. great. Great, great. Well, let's get some, I'm going to ask you guys some questions and just see, okay? Um, Robert asked Jennifer who were the best drivers, men or women. What did she say? Women. Women. Uh huh. And why did she say that? Because they drive safe, more safe than men. <laughs> <laughs> uh huh. Do you guys remember what she said? That was her experience. That was her experience. Very good. Okay. Well done. 
So what do you guys think? Do you guys think that men or women are better drivers? To my mind, uh, women is uh, better drivers because uh, they are more uh, details than we are and uh, they like do everything perfect in their life. Okay, so Dimitri says that women are bad drivers. Is that correct, Dimitri? No, they are better drivers oh, than men. Oh, they are better drivers. I'm sorry. Dimitri thinks women are better drivers. Okay, good. What do you think, Paolo? Yeah, it depends. I think that the men um, normally have more experience, but the women, the women normally uh, drive with more attention, pay, pay more attention to drive. So I think that depends. And okay, yeah. good. Thank you very much. Now, just to let you guys know, when we talk about men, men is plural. It's plural for what word? Men is yeah. plural for man, right? Man and the plur so man is singular, <laughs> men is plural. So you don't have to say men's. You don't have to say men's because if you add an s, then it's not correct. Men is already plural, so you just say men, okay? Okay. <laughs> All right. Now, the other thing is you don't because you're you you don't want to say the men, the men's, for example. You don't want to say the men's, or you don't want to say um, unless you're unless you're talking about a specific group of men. You don't want to use the definite article, okay? If you're just talking about men in general in a generalized statement like men are better drivers you don't say the men are better drivers unless you're talking about those men over there if you're talking about men in general we just say men are better drivers okay or men are bad drivers whatever you are. okay good so let's go now to Laura what do you think Laura I think it depends on person uh, I know Crazy drivers, women and men, and safe uh, driver, women and men too. Depends on the person. Yeah, it depends on the person, right? Good. Yes. Okay. That you should be a politician. That's a Maybe. good. Yeah, that's a good political answer. You cannot offend the men, and you're not going to offend the women. You just said a good answer. <laughs> just it's okay. my opinion. No, Honest. I know. Yeah, it's a good one. It's a good one. Okay. Well done. So now let's go back to the top of the article here, folks. We'll go back to the top. Okay. And at the beginning here, it talked about a traffic jam. What is a traffic jam? Uh, let's ask Ken. What's a traffic jam, Ken? Mm, John. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. John, can you tell me? Uh, a, tra a traffic jam, uh, a, cr a traffic crowded. Crowded. Okay, if there's a lot of people at a at a baseball game, is that a traffic jam? Pardon. A lot of people at a baseball at a soccer game is that a tra traffic jam? No, no. In, uh, in the street, crowded in the street. Uh, car, car crowded in the street. Ah, okay, good. Anybody else? Can you help us? It's a queue of vehicles that normally moves slowly. Good. A queue of vehicles. What is a queue? Queue is line. A long, okay, good. So in, in, in the UK, in Britain, they say a queue. But in English, sorry, not in English. <laughs> in American, North American English, we say a lineup or a line. But that's a long line of cars. That's a traffic jam, okay? Okay, good. What in the in the article that we read, what was the longest traffic jam ever recorded? It was in China, 100 kilometers long. Yeah, good job. What's the longest traffic jam you've ever been in? How long did you have to wait in a traffic jam? What's the longest amount of time? 
Have you ever had to wait one hour? Dimitri, I how many, Dimitri? Uh, I have no car, but uh, when I was in Saint Petersburg, uh, we was living to my uncle, and uh, we were standing in the traffic jam machine for forty minutes in the okay. central part of the city. Forty minutes in the traffic jam. That sounds terrible. Has anybody had a, been in a traffic jam longer than forty minutes? Oh yes, I uh, I in Paris. Uh, was waiting for the traffic jam around three hours because oh, my goodness. because of longer than forty minutes of taxi drivers strike. I in Paris uh, was waiting for the uh, Dugu Osen. Welcome to the class. You you have to mute your microphone when you enter, otherwise. Uh, you won't be able to participate, okay? I've muted your microphone. Please put your headset in and please close down all other windows except for the Google Hangouts, all right? Thank you. So, Paolo, you said three hours? Uh, four hours. Hector, no, oh. three, hour, three hours. Hector three hours. said three hours, okay. Paolo, how long for you? Five hours. How many? Five. Five hours in a traffic jam? Really? Oh my goodness! Last year, I I was uh, I was driving to to a beach, so it's a, it was on a big holiday, so a lot of people wanted to to go to the beach. So okay, <laughs> you must have really wanted to go to the beach to wait five hours. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Can anybody beat five hours? Okay, nobody can beat five hours. How long was the longest traffic jam in China? How many how many hours was it? Twelve days. Twelve days. Can you guys imagine? <coughs> no. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. They said you get 14 days of holidays, two weeks, a year. They'd spend their entire holiday in a traffic jam. They'd be like, oh man, now I gotta go back to work. <laughs> Could you imagine? Craziness. Okay, imagine that you like saved up all your money and you were gonna go to Greece for this wonderful vacation. So you decide, I'm gonna drive to Greece. So you get in the car and you start driving, and then you get stuck in a 12 day traffic jam. Terrible. <laughs> you you will remember this vacation uh, for your your life. <laughs> Absolutely. Funny too. That would be just so sad, wouldn't it? You'd probably want to cry because you spent your whole vacation in your car. Okay, let's go down the page a little bit, folks. And we talked about um, another word here called gridlock. What is a gridlock? <laughs> Uh, let's have let's have Andrea. Can you tell us what is a gridlock? No, I can't. I don't know. What's that, Andrea? I don't know what it is. You don't know what a gridlock is? Okay, no problem. No problem. Um, Juan, what is a gridlock? It's similar to traffic jam, right? Yes. How is it? How is it similar? What does it mean? Well, it's similar because uh, you can move, <laughs> you can keep going. Good, okay. So traffic jam and get gridlock are very similar. Well done. Okay, let's go down to the next one, a maelstrom. What is a, maels a maelstrom um, or a maelstrom? Laura? Mm, I guess, but I can't explain it. Okay, no problem. Who can like explain? round, maybe. Hmm? Like round. The ground? No, not ground. Like, oh, I can't explain. A maelstrom. Who can who can help us with this one? What is a maelstrom? Who can explain it? Disordered uh, condition. Condition. 
For Dis example. Oh, okay. Disorderly condition. Condition. Okay. Maybe. Good. Yeah, you're on the right track. Anybody else want to add something? Uh, like, like cows. Cows. Cars or cows? Mm, cows. Cows. Are you saying that cows are malstroms? <laughs> yes. Cows. C H A O S. No, no. <laughs> oh, chaos. 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 Okay. Chaos. 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 I thought you were saying a cow. I'm like. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That was Maybe funny. traffic looked. Yeah. Sorry. What was that? Uh, traffic looked. Looked traffic. Yeah. Okay. So if you notice, guys, on the on the transcript, it says a malstrom, a confusing, chaotic mix of vehicles which are crammed. Bumper to bumper. What does that mean, bumper to bumper? For example, when you're in a line, like you said, teacher, like one car behind another one, they're almost uh, uh, stick to each other. That's bumper to bumper. So they are not moving quite fast. That's the reason why they are close to each other, I guess. Yeah, good. Okay, so the bumper is where on your car? What is a bumper? What is a where? Where is the bumper on your car? It's like we we, we call it the, in Spanish la defensa. It's like a a, a part the, the the front part of the vehicle right behind the hood. Good. Okay. And you actually have a front bumper and a back bumper. Right. Right. Yeah, we have a front bumper and a rear bumper. Good. Okay. Well done, hip. Exactly. So if bumper to bumper, that means you got a car here and you got a car here and they're bumper to bumper, okay? So they're not going anywhere. You're stuck there for 12 days in your vacation. Done. Okay, good. Now the next one was, uh, the next one was get behind the wheel. What does that mean? To get behind the wheel. I'm driving. What's that? I'm driving. To start driving? Yeah. Yeah, good. To start driving, to start driving is to get behind the wheel. Okay. Do so you guys understand that? Cuz where is the wheel? What wheel are we talking about when we say get behind the wheel? The wheel means the the um, well, actually, wheel. It's with the one that that, that you can uh, move your car, turn the car left to the right. Oh. Yeah, what's that called? What's that wheel called? You guys remember what that wheel is called that you use to direct the steering your car? wheel. The steering wheel. Good. That's your steering. If I if I turn the car this way, I'm steering the car. If I turn it this way, I'm steering it the other way. So that's my steering wheel, okay? Yeah. Steering wheel. Okay. And then you got What's the thing in the middle? What's the thing in the middle? <laughs> huh? Your horn. Okay, good. Let's continue. The end of the row. What does the end of the road mean? When, uh, where, where the road is end. Is uh, where, okay, where the road ends. Ends. Where the road ends. Okay, good. Well done, guys. Now, one more here is gas guzzling. If something is gas guzzling, what is it? It spends or it consumes a lot of gas. Great, good, yes, it consumes a lot of gas. Excellent job. A lot of gas. Okay, well done. I think that was all of them. Very good. Do you guys have any questions about the story now? No. No? Teacher, I got a question. 
Sure. There is an e there is an idiom uh, la, that, that says I'm at the driver's seat. So can can I use the expression I'm behind the wheel trying to mean I'm at the driver's seat? Yes, you can actually. Very good. Very intuitive. Yes. <laughs> Thanks. It, that means that you're in charge. If you're right. yeah, good. Okay, perfect. Well done. Um you guys want to do another one? Yes. Okay, let's do another one now. We've got time for one more, shall we? Here's the transcript. I'll give you guys the link to the transcript. Let it rip. All right. <laughs> There's the transcript. And here comes the audio. Okay, since it's British, we'll talk in a British accent. Here comes thy audio. All right, one moment. Can I do a little switcheroo here? One sec. Okay, I think we're good. So, we're going to play it. English from bbclearningenglish.com Hello, I'm Rob. Welcome to 6 Minute English. I'm joined today by Fei Fei. Hi there, Rob. Hi, Fei Fei. I think we all know that there are many rare species of animals that are being illegally hunted to make money. And 200 governments have been meeting in Bangkok to talk about how to tackle this problem. Well, more on that in a moment, but as always, we like to start with a question. Mm, and this question is for me, isn't it? It is, Fei Fei. Let's see if you can answer the question correctly this time. The dodo bird has been extinct for a very long time. That means there have been no living members of the species for quite a long time. But when did this bird come extinct? Was it A, in the late 1600s, B, in the late 1700s, or C, in the early 1900s? Okay, I will go for answer A, in the 1600s. Okay, well, let's find out if you're right at the end of the programme. The expression desert dodo refers to this bird and can be used to describe something that is completely dead or no longer working. And there's no doubt that many other animal species are facing extinction or dying out. Yes, some experts are predicting a global extinction crisis, so it's an extremely urgent matter. And that's what governments have been discussing at a meeting in Bangkok. They want to come up with ideas on how to stop the illegal trading wildlife. They want to stop animals, such as elephants and rhinos, being killed for their horns and tusks. Conservation groups... Accelerate. So they mean the killing is increasing. So Rob, why is this problem on the increase? Well, Mary Rice from the Environmental Investigations Agency blames the way the illegal trade is policed, or to use her words, enforced. Let's hear from her now and see if you can hear the word she uses to describe how some people organise this illegal trade. There's the enforcement effort tends to end at seizure. The poachers get arrested and convicted. You might get the odd middleman. The guys who mastermind the efforts, the guys who invest in the operations to acquire large amounts of ivory, for example, have never been intercepted. That's Mary Rice talking about the enforcement effort, or where the authorities spend most of their time trying to stop the trade in wildlife. And that effort is concentrated on stopping the poachers. Poachers are the people who catch and kill the animals. They get caught and the tusks, haunts and other body parts they have taken are seized and confiscated are taken away by the police. But of course the animal has already died. Mary Rice says it is the people who mastermind the trade, in other words the people who organise the poaching and fund the trade, who are never caught or intercepted. And it's not just individual people. Thailand itself has been accused of being a transit route, a place endangered animals pass through while they're being shipped between Africa and China. And this highlights another issue too. If there's a demand for buying parts of the wild animals, someone will always try to supply them. 
it's a good point. In China and Hong Kong, for example, there's a huge appetite for shark fin soup, and it's claimed 100 million sharks are killed by commercial fishing every year to supply this demand. Well, luckily for the oceanic white tip shark, delegates at this year's meeting have voted to add it to a long list of endangered species that are being protected. Already, 35,000 animals and plants are protected by the Convention on the International Trade in Endangered Species, CITES for short. This agreement was signed in 1973, and the Convention works by licensing commercial trade in species, so it allows a fixed amount of controlled trading to take place. But illegal wildlife trading still continues. The BBC's David Shukman says more needs to be done. What three things does he think needs to happen? Having an international agreement clearly isn't enough. It'll take a combination of forensic science, police cooperation and political will to halt the killing. Conservation groups warn that if this rate continues, some populations of elephant and rhino will face extinction. So he thinks having an international agreement, CITES, isn't enough. He suggests using forensic science, police cooperation and political will. That means a desire by politicians to do something to stop this illegal activity. David Shukman warns that if nothing is done, some populations of elephant and rhino will face or be under threat of extinction. Well, that's what happened to the dodo. Ah, oh, yes. Earlier I asked you, when did the dodo bird become extinct? And I said, in the late 1600s. And you were absolutely right. <laughs> its last confirmed sighting was in 1662. Before we go, Fei Fei, could you remind us of some of the words we learned today? Yes, we heard hunted, extinct, dead as a dodo, conservation groups, slaughter, seizure, poachers, a transit route, endangered species. Thanks, Fei Fei. Well, that's it for today. Please join us again soon for Six Minute English from BBC Learning English. Bye. Bye. That was Six Minute English. Okay, okay, fantastic. I'm just going to make a quick little swap here, get my mic back on. Okay, good stuff. I'm back. Can everybody hear me all right? Yes. Good stuff. Okay, so that was certainly an interesting article. How many of you had heard about the dodo bird before today? A lot of news. <laughs> Did you guys have have you heard of the dodo bird before? No. Never. No. Never? Okay. So it is true, guys, that that is an expression that we use quite a bit in English, actually. Um, if something is as dead as a dodo, something is as dead as a dodo. And that's because it refers to this type of bird that has been extinct. What does it mean if something is extinct? What does that mean? What did we learn? It is dead. Okay, good. So if my dog dies, is my dog extinct? Uh, no, 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 no longer exists. Exist. Okay, so if my dog is dead, it no longer exists. Does that mean that it is extinct? Refers refer to, to a species. Good, very good. Okay, fantastic. So it refers to when an entire species of animal is gone. Okay. Well done. Well done. Fantastic. So the dodo bird is one of those. The dodo bird is extinct. There's no more left on the and last one seen. When was the last dodo bird seen? Um, in um, in the late uh, sixteen to zeros. Yeah. Good. Excellent. The article said it's down at the end. It said. 1662 was the last confirmed sighting. Okay? So, well done. So, if something is as dead as a dodo, what is it? It means that uh, this creature are 
isn't alive at all, so you will never see the same uh, the same animals in the native in the nature. Okay, good, very well. That's perfect. So sometimes in English we use this as an idiom or an expression, and we say, "Oh, you're as dead as a dodo." What does that mean? Um, no longer alive. No longer alive. Okay. So, uh, or if your computer stops working, you could say, "Ah, oh, this computer is as dead as a dodo." Okay. My battery, for example, is dead as a dodo. Your battery is as dead as a dodo. Perfect. Good job. Okay. What is what is a conservation group? Uh, that is a group of people which uh, protect uh, protect animals. That protect animals. Good. Yeah. They. You can say that they are trying to conserve, conserve the animals. Trying to save them. Okay. All right. Good. Uh, do any of you guys work for a conservation group? Can you think of any conservation groups? What's a really what's a really famous conservation group? Um, Greenpeace. Yes, exactly. Greenpeace would be one of them. Excellent. Okay. Well done. Um, there's also another one. I think it's called the Wildlife Foundation. It's got a panda bear on the front. It's kind of like their emblem. That's another one. The Wildlife Foundation. Okay. Go. What about slaughter? What does the word slaughter mean? Anybody know? Like killing. What's that, Laura? Killing uh, when uh, killing animal. Okay, good. Yeah, when you kill an animal, to kill, good, to slaughter. And usually, when you think about the word slaughter, it it kind of gives the idea of a little bit cruel and violent. Okay, when you slaughter something in a violent way, it's then you. Uh, when you kill something in a violent way, it's like slaughtering it. Okay, okay, good. What are poachers? The hunters. The hunters. Okay, but these are not just hunters. There's something special about them. What is special about the poachers? They cross law. They do what? Uh, cross law. I will write. Okay, they break the law. Good. Poachers, poachers break the law. How do they break the law? They don't have permission to kill uh, animals, or to hunt animals. Okay. So when, when poachers kill animals, are they doing it so they can have dinner for their family? Mm, no, I guess they sell. Uh-huh. And, and what... What? Sorry, say that again, please. Hello. They do illegally hunting. Yes, you're right. They do it illegally. Okay, good. And what are they usually doing? Hector, do you know? I'm sorry. Do you, do you know? Could, could you repeat me, please? The sure. Question. Poachers. Why are poachers bad? What do they do? A uh, poacher. Um, they they uh, they catch the animal and kill and then they they sell them no yes and and what they do guys this is a this For is example, important for example if they call if they kill uh-huh what do they do they kill what oh. okay now, usually, usually, you guys are right. Oh, oh sorry. One. Okay, I'm gonna uh, speak here. I know. And leave the whole animal there. They just cut off the the hook. That. That's yes. All say. Okay. Good. Good. So, did you hear what he was saying, guys? Uh, poachers up. <laughs> asks. The horns, a tusk, like the part that comes out of an elephant, you know, that thing that's made of ivory, or the horn of a rhinoceros, 
They only want that part. So they kill the animal, they take what they want, and then they leave the rest of the animal for dead uh, to just rot, and then they sell the tusk for money. And so poachers are very bad because they kill many, many, many animals, and they just take the part that they want. And they do it illegally, like you guys said. So good job. That's a poacher, okay? Excellent. Let's continue. Um, the next one is, let's go down to endangered species. What does that mean, endangered species? Species in danger of disappear. Good, of disappearing from the planet. Fantastic. All right. So, can you guys think of, a, of an animal that is endangered? Do you know of any endangered animals? Yes, like like polar bear, for example. Which one, Hector? Polar bear. Can you write it in the chat box? Sorry, I just didn't hear. Yes, it. yes, uh, polar bear. Polar bear, polar bear. The mm -hmm. polar. Okay, the polar bear. Say that, polar bear. Mm -hmm. Rhino. Okay, but uh, I want you to practice your pronunciation. Polar bear, polar bear. Polar bear. Good, good. Yes, the polar bear. The panda. Okay, tiger, rhino, panda. Anyone else? The Tasmanian tiger, teacher. The Tasmanian devil, the Tasmanian tiger. Mm -hmm. Good. Okay, lion, the elephant. So lots of animals that are being poached. Some elephants, too, right? I think there's a certain type of elephant that the people, yeah. yeah. It's very sad, isn't it? How do you guys feel about, about that? What, what, what happened with the mammoths, teacher? They were killed by poachers as well? Or they just disappear. What's that? The mammoth. Do you mammoth. remember the... Yes. Oh, the mammoth. The mammoth. Yes. <laughs> yes, you're right. The woolly, the woolly mammoth. I thought you said Mahmoud. And uh, I didn't know. Yeah, the mammoth. Right. Let me show you guys a picture of the mammoth. Do you guys know what a mammoth looks like? Yes, like an elephant. How's an elephant? Hmm. A little different. How is it different? Yeah, I, I was saying mammoth in Spanish, teacher. That's the reason why I said mammoth. I didn't know how to pronounce it. Sorry. That's okay, Juan. That's okay. That's how you learn. Now you know how to say it. Mammoth, right? Thanks. They are extinct. Please, I want to I want to hear your comment, Paolo. They are extinct. Yeah, they're extinct. Right. Good. Okay. So. We don't want our animals to go extinct because when we have children one day, or maybe some of you have children, you want you want your children to see all the different animals, right? And uh, animals are certainly giving a lot of pleasure to our lives. Like, how many of you have pets? Do you guys have pets? Yeah. Yeah. And yes. pets are yeah. A lot of people have pets. They they enjoy them. And they, make, and they make them laugh, and they give them pleasure in their lives. So we don't want to see the animals die, right? Right. Okay, guys, so that's, that's going to be the end of our lesson. So how do you guys feel you did with your learning, with your listening comprehension? Do you feel that you were able to retain what you heard? Uh, yes, thank you for lesson. It was really wonderful, and we, I think that everybody uh, examined the comprehension skills. Okay, great. If you want to make it more challenging, and maybe next time we'll make it more challenging, is if you think you're really good with your listening comprehension, you don't follow along with the transcript. You only listen and you don't read it. And then you really get to test your listening comprehension. So maybe next time we'll do that. Okay, guys? So until next time, thank you very much for coming to the class. Um, if you like the class, please follow me on Verbling so we can uh, be connected. Also, here's my Facebook link. I've put it in the chat box. Please go on there. If you like the class or if you didn't like the class, go on there and let me know so that I can uh, improve. I'd like your suggestions. 
and that's all. So th thank, thank you so you. much. See you, See you next time. Bye. Okay, take care. Bye bye.